Have you guys been struggling to make thumbnails for your NBA 2K23 videos? Have you guys been struggling to, you know, pay for thumbnails? Well, in this video today, I'm going to give you guys a free tutorial on how to make thumbnails on NBA 2K23. You guys are going to need a laptop for this or a computer with Photoshop on it. And, um, yeah, I'm going to provide you with pretty much everything else. So, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope this video helps you guys out a lot. Thank you guys for the recent support. I appreciate you guys so much. But without further ado, let's get straight into this video. All right, guys, so the first thing that you guys are going to want to do is you guys are going to want to just go to the twos or threes, whether you're on current gen or next gen. On next gen, I recommend just going somewhere where there's a lot of light. So you're going to want to have something like this. Make sure that there's not too much light. Make sure there's not too little light, okay? Make sure there's just good lighting overall. And you guys are just going to want to go to animations. So I'm just going to go to my animations right here. So I'm just going to do this one. Finishing touch. So you just take the screenshot on your PlayStation. Go to your media gallery. Make sure that it looks good. So I'm just going to use this one, okay? If you guys have any clips of you playing the game, it's easier to uh, take screenshots like that. So let me just get some screenshots I always just save the clip when I'm greening a lot and then you know what I'm saying I just post it so yeah so let me just get one let me just do this real quick so I'm just gonna screenshot this the screenshots are very important all right the screenshots are very important because that's what's gonna make your thumbnail good okay now I have I have two screenshots so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna change my mascot make sure that you guys take the screenshots with the same clothes on in every screenshot because if you guys don't it's gonna look weird I'm not gonna lie all you guys are gonna want to do if you guys don't have an Elgato which most people don't you guys are just gonna want to make a Twitter account and then just upload it to Twitter just press share and then literally just choose Twitter okay so just link your Twitter to your PS5 and just share them and then literally just go to your computer and copy the image into Photoshop so now, once you guys get your screenshots, all you guys have to do is just, you know what I'm saying, go into Photoshop, and I'll show you guys what to do next. Alright guys, so once you guys get on your computer, open up Photoshop, and then basically, just go to Create New right here, um, and then just choose your custom uh, document size. You're going to want to do 1280 as the width, 720 as the height, the orientation has to be landscape, um, and then yeah, so just make sure that the background contents is custom, and then choose black, okay? Then you guys are just going to want to click create, just like that. Now what you guys are going to want to do is just place the uh, the screenshots that you took. So just go to file, place linked, and then go to wherever you uh, got them from. If you guys get them from Twitter, all you guys have to do is just copy them and paste them into Photoshop. Just by right clicking on the image on Twitter, pressing copy image, and then just press control V. So once you guys do that, you get them all in here. Go to File, Place, Link. They're all in here. You're going to want to hold Shift, click the top layer, hold, stay holding Shift, and then click the bottom layer of your screenshots. You're going to want to right-click. You're going to click Rasterize Layers. You're going to want to, what I first like to do is turn off the gameplay screenshots, and I like to get the screenshot of the My Player cut out. Okay, so you guys can do this in multiple different ways. You can do it in the pen tool way, which is a lot quicker and or not quicker it's it's a little more time consuming but it's definitely worth it um all you guys have to do for that is just what i like to do is if i have a mouse if you guys have a mouse hold all on your keyboard and just literally put the cursor wherever you want to zoom into so in my opinion i start from the uh, left side usually you're just going to want to zoom in and then you're going to want to just click under where the gray is right here and then you're just going to want to just hold click and drag to make a curve so if you want to uh, make a curve going towards the left, you're going to click and drag to the right and make it however big the curve is and vice versa for the other side. So I'm just going to make this a curve. When you guys make a curve, there's going to be three points. Okay, there's going to be three points. There's going to be the, the bottom one, the top one, and the middle one. On the middle one, you're going to hold alt. You're going to want to see this little triangle pop up next to the pen tool, and you're going to click on it, and it's going to make it so when you guys make your next curve, it doesn't get all weird. So that's what it looks like. And then if you guys don't do it, it just doesn't like follow what you're trying to do. So that's one way of doing it. You guys can use the pen tool. I used to use the pen tool a lot, but I found a better way to do this. A lot more efficient way. And it doesn't take as much time. 
So what you guys are gonna want to do is just basically either if you guys want to use the pen tool, then that's that's your choice. Um, but I usually just go to the magic wand tool or W on your keyboard, right click, go to quick selection tool, go to select and mask, and then you guys are just gonna want to just literally just click and drag down onto your player, and you're gonna see that parts of them will light up. So this is what it should look like right here. Um, and this is basically you masking off your character. It's not going to be perfect, so you might have to go in there with the polygonal lasso tool, which is right here, right above the quick selection tool. And then you're just going to want to zoom in, make sure everything looks pretty good. So for the most part, it's going to be perfect. But what I like to do just to make sure is I like to zoom into any areas that don't look good at all. Like, for example, the hair is not going to be perfect. It's not going to be perfect. You're going to want to go in, press shift, and just literally add to this okay so make sure you guys are holding shift the whole entire time and then all you guys will minus so it will literally take away whatever you're trying to select so it's very simple i hope i'm trying i'm trying to explain this the best i can um it's not hard at all if you guys have to you know watch the tutorial a couple times then that's fine you know it's whatever um but yeah so pretty much just do this very very simple very very easy um self-explanatory in my opinion a lot of people think it's hard to make thumbnails but once you really just do it and get used to it i'm telling you you'll never have to buy a thumbnail again i promise you that's why i learned it myself because you probably don't think about it but youtubers spend a lot of their revenue on just thumbnails so that's why I would definitely definitely you know learn this it's definitely a good skill to have so once you guys get your cut out there's gonna be a couple areas where you're gonna have to just do the same thing just minus or get rid of that stuff just like so just like I am and obviously this isn't gonna be picture perfect because I'm just doing this for the sake of this video um, I'm trying not to make the video too long because I don't want to have you guys here all day but once you guys you know what i'm saying get your your screenshot just press Control j on your keyboard and then just turn off the background and now you guys have the screenshot now you guys can just make sure that everything actually looks really good now because you guys can actually see everything against the black background so like i said it's, it's not going to be perfect for me but also make sure that you guys are doing this perfectly okay so as you guys can see i made my screenshot bigger all you guys have to do to do that is press Control t hold shift and alt and just drag from the top right corner so yeah make sure that you guys are holding shift and alt actually no it's just all sorry about that and it makes it so it's like even okay so you're just gonna want to make this bigger you guys are gonna want to get your gameplay screenshots you're gonna want to basically what i like to do once i get the my player done i like to go to my 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 gameplay screenshots and then i like to just place them pretty much is what i'm trying to say like how they should be placed so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna make this bigger just like this and then i'm gonna go in here i'm gonna basically do the same selected mask method once again um like i said it's not gonna be perfect the screenshots aren't gonna look you know very you know high quality but that's fine because in all reality if your thumbnail doesn't look as clear as you want it to in all reality um the thumbnail is going to be small on the video so when people are looking at the thumbnail it's going to look like it's good quality because it's just it's smaller than what it is on this screen so literally just cut them out once again very simple very easy and yeah so just do that i don't want to cut anything out because i'll get i want you guys to see what i'm doing and like i said your screenshots will definitely be way more cut out than mine are i'm just doing this for the sake of this video so just duplicate that again by pressing Control j keep the background layer turn it off though and then just get the next one ready so pretty much just do the same exact steps and it's kind of it's kind of a, a process so if you guys are not looking to do this then if you guys have it like that then just buy thumbnails um because 
if I'm being honest, I sometimes wish I could just text somebody and be like, yo, make me a thumbnail and then just keep recording other videos. But, you know, it is what it is. It's it's a good sacrifice to make. You won't have to. It's more work for yourself, but nothing comes easy in life. OK, nothing comes easy in life. So make sure that you guys uh, make sure that you guys just do what I'm telling you. Trust me, it's it's definitely something that you'll be used to, because even if you stop doing YouTube, you don't make thumbnails anymore for yourself. You can always do client work. So that's why I always try to explain to people that making thumbnails is definitely something you should be interested in. So, yeah, um, sorry, I'm not trying to like talk your guys ear off or anything, but I'm just trying to explain to you. The benefits of learning how to make your own thumbnails because then you can get super good at it and just make people thumbnails for a living I mean there's people that in the community in the 2k community that literally do that so once you guys get your screenshots you're gonna just once again just duplicate that and you're gonna want to just basically what I like to do for these type of thumbnails is I like to make them like I like to make the screenshots big as possible like this and then I like to take this tool the mark we tool and basically you just click and drag to select your background so I'm just gonna select this part of it I'm sorry about that I'm just gonna select this part of it and then just press control J once again to duplicate it and then you're gonna delete the layer under that one so now you have like a box of what you guys want it to look like so now you're just going to do the same thing for the other one. You're going to just make it bigger. Just like this. Maybe that might be too big. All right. And then you're just going to basically just duplicate that once again. Delete this background over here because you're going to need it to be. Well, no, you're not going to need it to be blank. Actually, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Sorry. So what you guys are going to want to do now, once you guys got your screenshots, obviously you're going to want to center them better because if you guys don't, it's going to look weird. So just move it up with the arrow key, just like that. And then just delete the rest of this like so. So now what you guys are going to want to do, this is one of the most important steps. You can delete that too. So you should have the layer with your player. You should have two other player layers for your gameplay screenshots and your gameplay backgrounds. Now you guys are gonna wanna go to filter up here, go to camera raw filter, and you guys are gonna want to copy the settings that I give you guys, because this is literally one of the most important steps when making thumbnails. You're gonna wanna turn your exposure up a pretty good amount to about 90 to 1, 0.90 to one. You're gonna turn your contrast up to about 35 to 40. Your highlights, about 10 each, uh, your shadows, 10 your uh, blacks you're gonna turn it down to like 25 negative 25 your texture you're gonna put all the way to 100 you're gonna put your clarity up to like 10 your vibrance up to like 4 your saturation up to like 5 then you're gonna put your detail you're gonna go to noise reduction you're gonna turn it up to about I would say 75 and look at how much better that makes your your character look that makes your character pop and then to save you guys time, all you guys have to do to put that on all the other layers is just click on them, press Control Alt F, and then it literally just puts it on there. So it's very, very good. Very, very easy. Very, very simple. So just do that. The next thing that I like to do is just go on to the uh, background layers of your uh, gameplays. Go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and then just turn it up. And you guys are going to see it's going to look a lot better. And then you're just going to press Control alt f on your other layer. And then if you guys blur a background and you didn't cut out enough of it, literally just select it again and just spam delete until it's gone. So, as you guys can see, that's like one of the, one of the, uh, one of the things. So, now, I'm going to be opening GFX packs you guys probably won't have. So, I'm just going to put the PSDs, I'm going to put this PSD in the uh, description so you guys can see or use the stuff that I use. Um, but yeah, so pretty much 
all you guys are gonna want to do is just follow what I'm doing. You guys probably will have this thumbnail PSD. So if you guys do have the GFX packs, if you guys have, you know, the GFX packs, then you guys can do it. But pretty much what I'm gonna be doing is adding takeovers over under my. I'm gonna add takeover under one of my feet, um, and then I'm gonna add the splash, the green light splash under it. So. Once this loads, make sure you guys drop a like if you guys haven't already. Make sure you guys follow my TikTok, follow my uh, YouTube, my Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. I'm going to be posting a tutorial on how to make TikToks for NBA 2K24. The reason I wanted to make this video is because when I first started NBA 2K, you know, content in general, I was struggling so hard to find, like, people that make thumbnails. I was struggling to make thumbnails for myself on my computer. And, yeah, I just wanted to help people. Um, so now what you guys are going to want to do is you guys are gonna get obviously all this stuff so let me just do this real quick so for takeovers wherever they are um let me just find them so first i'm gonna get the splash real quick green light splash and i'm just gonna get this one now with the green light splash all you guys have to do is just put it right here in front of your player hold, press ctrl t hold alt to make it you know a perfect size press control once you guys get it under your player like this you're gonna make sure that it's over your player okay you're gonna make sure it's over your player you're gonna press ctrl j ctrl t click ok right click um flip horizontal and then just drag the copied layer under the other layer and then you're just going to move it up so that it looks like 3d in a way just like that so that's how you guys add the splash and then i'm going to show you guys how to do the takeover so if i can just find the takeovers which i don't think he has takeovers in this oh yes he does i'm um, being stupid i thought he did i was like okay so i'm just gonna do sharp take because obviously this is a shooting uh thumbnail so you're just gonna copy it well you're gonna have it so yeah so just make it smaller and then what you guys have to do is just to make it red just press Control u and then click colorize right here take the saturation move it all the way up make sure that it's all the way over to red now you guys are just going to press control T. You're going to want to move it down and then you're going to want to hold control, drag the top corner, the top right corner and the top left corner down until it's like, looks like it's on the floor. Basically, you're going to make it bigger and then you're just going to want to do that camera raw filter on it once again, which control F. Um, well, sometimes it's not going to be there. So just basically just put it up. Don't put the exposure up too much. Just don't do as much harsh settings on this one because this is just takeover. It's not like, not like nothing crazy. So, yeah. So now I'm just going to add the fire to the takeover so that it looks good. Let me just find that. Effects. Flames. For some reason, I always choose this one because this one looks the best in my opinion. And then you're just going to want to just press Control T, make it smaller with holding Alt. And then you're just going to want to do the same thing. Take Hold Control, take the bottom left or the top left and the top right corners down. And then you're just going to want to just hold Control and just like kind of drag it to the... Until it fits perfectly. So this part is a little difficult it does take a minute to learn i'm not gonna lie it took me a while to learn how to do that stuff but with my tutorial it shouldn't take long at all so usually with these i don't add a text um but basically you guys can if you want to but i don't recommend it so for now that we have that we're gonna put the sky image in the background wherever that is where is that Sky images. We're just going to take this one. Put this behind our every single layer. 
and then you're just gonna want to make sure that you can see all the clouds and then all you guys are gonna want to do is go to your mascot layer or your player layer double click on it click bevel and emboss make sure that the size is at one make sure that the styles inner bevel technique is smooth the depth is a thousand the size is one turn off use global light keep these same angles turn up your highlight mode to normal all the way to 100 white turn down your opacity of your shadow mode to black and then you guys are going to want to do inner glow you're going to want to change it to overlay put the opacity at like 45 put the size up and then you guys are going to put the range up to like whatever looks good so that looks good right there and then yeah so just copy that and paste that onto both of your other player layers so literally just press control press and hold control click both of them right click and deselect this one too right click on them press paste layer style and then boom you guys are done with that so now you just got to add some effects around your players so just make a new layer by pressing this plus button press b on your keyboard and then you guys are going to want to hold alt click in between the layer that you just made and your player layer and then just use the uh use this up here change the brush size make sure that the hardness is zero change the brush size to like i would say 200 and then you're just going to want to, as you can see, if you click inside of this player, it literally makes it like, you know what I'm saying? It goes onto the player instead of, you know, going on the background. So all you guys are going to want to do is just make a, like a highlight or like a, you know, something like that. And then once you guys do that, you're just going to want to make another layer above that and then just make it smaller. Just like that. And then just add an outer glow or like an, an inner glow. So I'm just going to do overlay, turn the opacity down to like five, honestly. And then all you guys have to do after that is just, there's going to be, like I said, you guys could add a text if you want. It's your personal preference. I personally don't a lot. Sometimes I do. But I will just for the sake of this video to show you guys what it, how to make a text. So there's going to be my GFX pack for sale um, on Twitter. It's like 8 bucks, And it comes with layer styles. Um, but I'm just going to make one that you guys can, you know, keep. So hold on one second. Best change this to Hanson never put a text right here never put a text right here because then it will be blocked off by the timestamp okay we're just gonna change this always try to change up your your fonts because if you guys don't it's gonna look kind of like re repetitive so don't make the same fonts every thumbnail a lot of people do that and they don't understand that it just doesn't look good so just select both of the text make them smaller rotate them go to the text press Control t click this little button up here change the uh warp to arc three same thing with this sorry three and then all you guys have to do is just copy what i'm doing so click on the play click on the uh text layer go to gradient overlay just go to basics click the black one and then just change this to like if you guys want like a like a white text just change this like that go to inner shadow distance turn it Put the distance down make sure the opacity is up all the way change it to like a light gray like that and then you're going to want to add another inner shadow and then just change it to black or oops gotta go to the other one Duh. you're going to want to change the angle of it so if it's at 90 negative 90 turn off use global light because i actually turned it on for this case so you're just gonna change the opacity or actually just do overlay opacity all the way up. So 
so just like that and then you're just gonna want to double click it do stroke make sure that's like the same color why did I keep hold on, let me turn off use global light because that, that you actually have to turn it off because it's annoying so let me just do that like that stroke you're gonna want to do a darker color just like that so like a gray and then just do a drop shadow make sure that you copy these settings just like that boom and then you just literally do the same thing but change the colors so I'm just gonna do this green mixed with this green but I'm gonna make it like a little bit more vibrant that makes sense like that and then you're gonna do the inner shadow once again which is just black change it to overlay actually no don't change it to overlay just lower the opacity on this one inner shadow white not white not white go to normal inner shadow do this color like this yellowish color you're just gonna make it really light so just like that then you're gonna do stroke change the color to green so a darker green just like that drop shadow even darker green just like that make sure that distance isn't too crazy because then it's gonna look weird and then all you guys have to do after that just make sure that it's not over your players just like so you're gonna want to drag this like that all right once you guys do the text you're just gonna make a layer above it press b on your keyboard make the text size like 175 for the bigger text make sure that your color is whatever color that you guys chose to do you're just gonna click it click on it make a couple highlights and then just hold all it'll drop the eyedropper tool just click there make it smaller to like 100 and then boom just do that change the blending mode over here to linear dodge add lower the opacity turn on once you guys do that as you can see the color corrections make it look better you're just gonna turn on whichever color correction looks best and in my opinion it's this one right here so that's how you guys make an NBA 2K23 thumbnail. You guys can also put the NBA 2K23 logo in here too. Um, which is also in my pack. You guys will get these layer styles. Um, but yeah. So always make the... Put it at like the top. Just give me a second chat. Alright. So that's how you guys do that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Drop a like, drop a sub, turn on post notifications. I appreciate you guys. The link to this PSD will be in the description. Once you guys are done, you're just going to want to select every single layer. Hold the top layer. Um, hold shift. Click the top layer. Click the bottom layer. Press control G. Press control J. Press control E. And then once it creates into one layer, you're just going to go to filter. Camera raw filter. And then you guys are just going to want to do this you're gonna want to put the exposure up a little contrast up a little texture up a little clarity up a little vibrance and saturation up a little and then your detail or not your detail you're gonna want to do curve and you're just gonna take this click drag up a little this drag it down a little and then boom that's how you guys make a you know NBA 2K23 thumbnail. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Drop a like, subscribe, turn on post notifications, and the link the link to this will be in the description. Of the PSD download, um, and then if you guys need my GFX pack, make sure you guys hit me up on Twitter at Rising Unique YT to uh, you know what I'm saying cop that. It's only eight dollars. As soon as you send the money on Cash App, I literally just send you the the download link from Media Fire. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.